bit on um, Chen Yang in the dark um, and just general group ride. So here we go, about five blokes here. Very cold day, maybe three degrees. No, minus three degrees, sorry. And um, here we go, rolling to the front. So you can see, you barely see anything. I tried to do some color editing, but it was really hard. The, con the problem is the contrast just, you can't really see anything apart from the flashing lights because everything else is so dark. This is absolutely terrifying doing this, to be honest, um, because you literally can't see anything, really. You just hope no one's going to crash in front of you because normally you can look ahead in one of these group rides and see what's going on up the road, but it was very hard to see. Um, so <laughs> that person was very scary when we saw them. This is probably like 6.30, 7, 7, 7 a.m. or something. We were flying around the park, and it was good fun, good fun, enjoy it a lot. So you can see, we, you know, we're, we're doing quite fast, this guy in front of me was quite strong, and um, people often say, like, it's very hard to, when you're a new cyclist to know how hard to pull through. Um, so you can do on speed, which can be good if you're going, like, the same direction. So let's say it's a straight road, same wind, not really much is changing then let's say someone's doing 35 k's an hour when you get to the front do 35 k's an hour more or less and that's roughly the speed you want to go up but obviously here in a park we're going around in circles there's different winds there's different hills we're going downhill uphill um so it can be quite hard for some people to know how hard to go on the front so normally i just try and estimate roughly the wattage that someone will be doing on the front based on the wattage i'm doing behind and like the wind so if there's a straight head when you're doing like 150 watts they're probably doing 250 300 on the front and then if maybe it's a faster section you're doing 270 then yeah they're probably doing 300 watts on the front or like something like that but at the moment you can see we're going downhill so there's quite a good draft and we're going like 42 k's an hour so i was sort of estimating about 280 to 300 but the thing is that at the beginning you always need to make sure when you pull through you don't pull through too hard you just go easy and sort of gradually edge it up to speed because once so this guy's flicks his elbow, I come through, and I knock it up a little bit, but try and keep the speed about the same. Because if the speed stays the same, like obviously I'm doing more watts because we were going downhill, now we're on the flat. But the speed stays roughly the same, then um, you sort of know that it won't be too hard for the people behind. And after maybe like a minute or like 30 seconds on the front, then if you're feeling a bit strong, you could increase the pace a bit because everyone's probably back on. It's just the worst thing to do is get as soon as you get to the front, just accelerate and sort of bring it up two or three k's an hour, because then the person on the back is going to have no chance, and everyone else is going to be panicking. If you're ever going to accelerate, and you see the pro say this the whole time at lead outs, you want to do it very slowly and gradually. I'm not sure what this car was doing, but you never ever want to like suddenly hit it on the front, because then everyone has to accelerate, and it's very tiring for everyone on the group. Obviously, if you're attacking, that's, that's exactly what you want to do, because then it forces everyone to chase. But if you're trying to ride it cohesively as a group, and that is the wrong thing to do. So anyway, going around, we're going to see some lights. Um, but I think I think we just zoom through. Um, you can as you can see it's like a decent amount of cyclists for considering how cold it was. There was sort of ice on the road or whatever, a bit of grit on the road as well. Um, yeah, and it was very cold. It's dark. It was a Saturday morning, but cyclists are always out. Cyclists always want to train, which is nice. Um, so here we go. A bit of track standing, I believe. Um, and then off we go. So on, also the other thing to notice is on like the after you start from the traffic lights is you don't want to accelerate too fast either um, because otherwise everyone it sort of ruins the group order. Um, so you can see here that person's going to way too big a gear on the right. Look at him, he's trying to push. I'm not sure if it's because he doesn't want to accelerate or he's generally struggling, but I think his gear was too big um, nonetheless. Um, so... He sort of wants to come to the front. I don't really mind what position I'm in. It's always a bit weird because these people often don't like you joining in because they have a very set like average speed and like the how many laps they do. So if you go in and sort of bump it up to 34 k's now because going downhill, they're all very angry. But then they smash it up the hill to try and get the same average speed. So it's just very nonsensical, uh, the pacing strategy. But I can't complain too much because <laughs> they're the only group we're going around. I, um, sometimes there's another group like Islington Cycling Club, but I haven't seen them for a bit. I don't know, that's a bit weird. Um, but anyway, nonetheless, it's nice to be with groups. For me, like, even if maybe I don't do any turns at the front, um, which I didn't do too many just because I thought felt like they didn't really want me to do it, sort of gave off that vibe. Um, it's good just practicing riding in a group, and I said this on a different video, just practicing riding in a group, like just holding the wheel, whatever, it just makes it, if you're just used to riding in a group, it makes, when you come to a race, just far easier because you're just a lot more relaxed. 
you know what people are going to do around corners, you know like how to pedal, you know to keep a high cadence, you know how to do whatever. So here I sort of like let the wheel go a little bit too much and you just gradually get better. Like the more you do something, the better you're going to get. And I feel like it's quite important um, to cycle with a group regularly, um, maybe even just once a week, especially in the off season when maybe you won't be, you obviously are not racing as much. When you're racing, it's normally fine. You don't need to um, just because you have that sort of race pace intensity and you also have that like neuromuscular facilitation as they always say when you're doing like a group group exercise like this um and you just get used to it it's a slightly different pedaling sort of the constant little accelerations and then easing off and like getting getting used to riding how to ride like smoothly so you don't accelerate because so, what some people do and this person ahead of me do a little bit is they'd accelerate a lot to try and sort of when someone would accelerate a little bit on the front they'd accelerate massively because they didn't want the gap to hold like gap to establish and then the problem is then they'd have to basically like break or slow down massively and then by the time they've done that they wouldn't keep pressure on the pedal so then they'd have another gap and it would just be this constant surging backwards and forwards which is really inefficient to ride with and not very good um so you can he see here they're letting person in front of me is letting the wheel go so that the people can come in and basically we don't do a turn uh, I think they said something after I did my turn because they all just dropped my wheel which was really weird I don't know if I was going too fast for their average speeds or whatever but nonetheless it was um it's a good ride but you can see here that I don't really want to be on the left hand side because it's a bit icy and like I, it's not great group ride etiquette, but I normally do it, like I just roll next to the person on the right, which can be a bit dangerous, like obviously in races that's what you do, you just roll to the front, you want to keep your momentum in a group ride, some people aren't very happy when you do that, because it sort of ruins the group, if you want to have like two distinct lines, or one distinct line, um, but nonetheless, it doesn't really matter that much, I mean, you, there's always going to be people on your group ride who are, like to shout a lot, and like to complain or whatever, but just got to chill out, realise it's good fun riding in the open air, so you can see, we sort of, the speeds are quite variable, but we're generally going quite fast along this part. Um, it was quite a big, like, it was just, I don't know, when you wear winter clothes, you tend to go quite a lot slower, because you'll just have a lot more wind resistance, because obviously your body is insulated by a lot more. When you've only got, like, a jersey and shorts on, you're a lot faster. Um, and also the air pressure, that's the other thing. And people always take the piss out of me when I say this. But the air pressure actually does make a difference. <laughs> like, the difference in speeds that you're going to get in comparison to, um, like, when it's winter and summer. Sorry, I was looking at this bloke coming in here. He was thinking he wanted to do some turns, didn't realize we weren't doing turns or whatever. But anyway, the difference between winter and summer is actually noticeable. Like, um, you do go slower because the air pressure is just not as good. Obviously, the difference between minus 3 and, let's say, 25 degrees, which is pretty much the extreme we have in the UK, like, that will make a difference. Obviously, the difference between, like, 10 degrees and 15 degrees probably won't be too much. But it does make a difference on that. So if you are comparing your Strava segments, even if you have a power meter, sometimes, like, something about speed that's really nice because it's quite an old school measurement and it's quite, like, everyone knows what speed is. Like, if, you, if you're talking to the average person, like, oh, yeah, you're quite fast at cycling, and you're like, yeah, I can do 5.5 watts per kilo for 20 minutes, or I can do 7 watts per kilo for 5 minutes, or I can do whatever. They'd be like, mate, what are you on about? But if you're like, yeah, I can do 40 kilometers an hour for, like, 10 minutes, they'd be like, whoa, that's fast, or whatever it is, 25 miles an hour for 10 minutes. Because that, that's, like, relatable to their car. So people do, like, average speed. I still like average speed. Sometimes I fight for, like, that over 30k an hour average speed. Or I mean, I know it's irrelevant, but there's something quite nice about it. But it can be worrying in, like, when you compare your race, you're like, how could I ever solo off at, like, 45Ks an hour? But in a race, you're going full gas, like, you have less stuff on your bike, I don't know, you're, you're going to get a narrow position, like, etc., etc., etc. So, in the winter, just ignore the average speed, look at the numbers on your screen, on the power meter, and see what they mean, um, and see if you're going well. But again, just don't panic, like, I don't know, for me, I know you can sort of, like, I've only ridden with a power meter for a couple of years, it will be my second year in, like, February. But you can sort of tell, like, w how fit you are without even doing, like, a full 20-minute test. Like, I know now I could probably do about 290 to 300 watts just based on, like, sweet spot, based on this group ride, like, how hard I found some of the surges and whatever. Um, and also just, like, how you feel on the bike. Like, sometimes you just feel quite strong and, like, your endurance, you feel like your legs don't really tire. Um, especially if you suddenly do, like, three 15 20 hour weeks and you've only been doing 10 or 5 hour weeks before after that block you suddenly feel like you can ride for two hours at a decent intensity and you don't feel that tired um but on this group ride most of it i mean i looked at it and most of it was just like an endurance pace like 
for me just because I was sitting on the back, which wasn't great because my training, st- my training stress score was supposed to be high because I was supposed to be doing turns on the front, but I just didn't really want to, like, inv- they just all oh, a bit annoying, these people, but I sort of quite like riding with the group, and then you saw my little other video with my little sprint, um, or my failed, failed sprint, but that was quite fun. I quite enjoy, like, practicing, practicing sprinting. I'm not sure how long this video, we've only got, like, a minute or so left. Um, quite a long vid to be fair. I quite like practicing my sprinting and practicing like things like that. I'd say that's one thing for me. It's like not even practicing your sprinting to get better at sprinting, like the absolute raw power, but just like if you practice sprinting, you'll know which gear to be in. You'll know like how you can generate power. You know which cadence you prefer. So like for me, I pre- I feel like I quite like I don't know. It's weird. Like, I feel like there's this one sweet spot which is about like. So not sweet spot, like the horrible spot, which would be, I'd say, about 115 cadence, 110 cadence. I just can't produce power then. But maybe 100 cadence, I can produce quite a lot of power. And, like, 120, I can produce power. But if I get my gear wrong, which I did, I just sort of, like, not really spinning fast enough to get power. Like, I don't know. Like, not spinning fast enough to actually get huge power, but not sort of going slow enough to really, like, produce the force from the muscles. It's just this dead zone, and I've never hit good power. Um, but I hit my power BB recently, so I feel like my sprint, my sprinting is definitely getting better, and I need to keep keep that up. Uh, it's often quite hard to remember to do sprint training, but it's very useful, especially if you're like racing somewhere like the UK or almost everywhere, like finishing in a sprint. Unless because most races you don't finish up on a hill, or if you do, there'll be a sprint at the end of the hill. Normally, like you finish on the flat, but the hills will be the deciding factor. So it's really important to have a good sprint. Um, but yeah. So, thanks for watching. This is the end of the vid. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, quite quite a nice group ride, and um, I'll see you in the next video. See ya. Bye.